So hello and uh, welcome to you all in the today's class. So we were discussing about uh, collection classes. We discussed some of the collection classes in the previous uh, lecture. So to start with, uh, we are uh, going to discuss three set class. We discussed uh, one class yesterday that is hash set and uh, linked hash set. So what is the difference between what we discussed earlier and uh, the class that we are going to discuss today, tree, tree set class. So the first important point is uh, if you use a tree set class, in that case, the storage that is used for keeping record of the elements is is tree. So this is used. Tree is used for the storage of the elements. And another important point is if you use tree set, the elements or the objects that you add are stored in sorted order. In ascending order, you can store them in descending order as well. For that, you have to implement uh, a comparator that we will discuss in the coming uh, lectures also how you can do that. And in case of uh, tree, the access and retrieval time are quite fast. Why this is quite fast? Because uh, tree is used for inserting the elements or keeping record of the elements and as you know that in case of uh, tree the traversal time is uh, of the order of log of n so if you want to retrieve an element at max that algo will take Preset create object of the tree class and some more constructor are there that we will discuss in the coming classes as well how to use those because we haven't used till now these uh, constructors. 
So another important point is this because the tree set implements navi navigable set interface. So you can uh, retrieve the elements of the tree set using the methods defined by the navigable interface. So I'm going to example it more clear. So already called some of the problem. So this is based on asset. This we discussed already. And uh, this here is the example of reset. So we uh, in this example is. And not audible. Hello, morning, sir. So you are not audible. Hello. Hello. Sir, you are not audible, sir. So, if you look at the result of this program, you will be able to see that the sphere, this as shown as the sorted list of elements if we print this second is if you want to retrieve the first element of that reset then you can use the first method uh, ts dot first this will give you the very first element of uh, the list and in this case the first element is a so we will get a in this case Then we call ts dot last method. Last is another method that is a, the ts preset class. So we are calling it and we will get the last element. So because the last element in this case is uh, x, so you will get x as a result of this. So we are getting the second x as a result of that due to this because we give the instruction to print the last element of the list <clears throat> then there is there's another method that we are calling over here is uh, ceiling so what the ceiling does is although x is not there in this case if you look at the list of elements that we added into the Reset. This is the list of elements. H is not there. So if we if we find the seal of H, ceiling of H, what it gives is uh, it gives us the element that is greater than or equal to the element that is passed as a as an argument. So uh, it will give us result H if uh, the H is there in the list. 
if hash is not there in the tree set then it will give you the alphabet that comes after h and there and is there in the list so what comes after h that is there in the list is k so we will get the k as a result then if you find a floor h so this will give you the element that is uh, less than or equal to the element that is passed as an as an argument or parameter the great and less than here in this case if you find the element that is less than h and is in the list uh, that we added into the tree set so the element f is there that is lesser than h the greatest element that is lesser than h because all these elements a b c d e f uh, all are lesser than h but the greatest element that is lesser than or equal to h is f so you, uh, you will get f as a result so that's why we are getting over here the result f then there is another method uh, that is subset if you want to find the subset of uh, the elements that we added into the tree uh, so this is the complete list of elements and uh, if you want to find out the subset from c to f so c to f is uh, this including c but excluding f so you will get c d e so this should be the and the tree set will return all those elements including the lower element but excluding the the upper element so this is the case that's why we are getting this uh, c d e so if i if i try it with some other input values let's say i want to find out the subset of uh, h to to r so it will find all the elements that are there from between h and r so between h and r we have uh, just one element that is k h is not there although r is also not there if you check the order the elements that comes between these two is the k so it will give you the k so this is the purpose of subset and some of uh, you have passed one note uh, about the ceiling method so i'm going to repeat it uh, what seal does actually we discussed that the seal method sealing method returns as the least element greater than or equal to the element that is passed as a parameter so we are passing to the sealing method uh, element h or object h we can say because this is a string literal and uh, it will it will be converted into a string type object when this ceiling will be performed because we need to pass the ceiling an object of string class so if you look at the list all the elements that are greater than h are the, these these three elements k t and x these are the greater than h but the least element that is greater than or equal to h is k so you will get the k as a result so this is 
the functionality of the ceiling method. So this is the case uh, of this problem. So now let's uh, discuss the next program. The next concept uh, is the priority class, priority Q class. Priority Q class uh, extends abstract Q and it's implement Q interface. It creates a Q that is prioritized based on the Q comparator. Uh, we'll discuss how we can prioritize the elements of the queue very soon. Queue, you know that it's a kind of uh, first in, first out data structure. And uh, in case of queue, we can add elements from one side and remove elements from the other side. The side or the end at which we can add elements is called the rear end. And the end from which we remove the elements or delete the elements is called the front end. So in case of priority queue, every element of the queue has some priority associated with it. Priority these are basically uh, associated using a number. We can say that uh, if we talk about a list of numbers, then we can say that lower is the number, higher is its priority. So like that. Or you can devise your own rule to set the priority for the elements. Priority queue is a generic class that is defined in Java. Lang uh, Java dot util package, sorry, and uh, its general declaration is this priority queue. You have to pass the class or the type of objects that you want to store into the queue. So, this is required. Another important point is the priority queues are uh, dynamic in nature. So while your program is executing, the size of uh, the priority queue can increase or decrease as per the requirements of the program. So priority queue uh, has some constructor defined in uh, in the class, and those constructors are listed on this slide. The very first constructor is a non parameterized constructor where, when you create the object, uh, you need not pass any element. Then you can create a priority queue with the certain size, let's say 50 or 100, it depends. Uh, upon your program, what you want to do, what you want to implement in your program. It depends on that. Then there are some constructors uh, in which you can use the comparator as well. So soon I will show you the example how you can use the comparator um, with the priority key to a certain order. So I'm going to show you one example.
into the first element that we have added is uh, hello then we added Deepak then we added a uh, name Simran after that we added a name Rajat so because this is a priority queue so the class will add these methods or the add method will add these elements into the priority queue in their alphabetical order so if you check the output of this you will get the elements uh, this is the result so these will be added uh, according to their alphabetical order so if you don't use any comparative in the priority queue then a normal sequencing is followed a normal sequencing means if you want if you add the strings into the queue priority queue then those strings will get aligned or sorted in their alphabetical order if you add numbers into the queue then those numbers will be uh, added in the increasing order so if you are not using the comparator in that case this will happen so it will follow the natural ordering natural ordering means uh, the number will be arranged in the increasing order and the string will be arranged in the alphabetical order if you want to arrange them in a reverse alphabetical order then what you have to do this we will discuss very soon here is another problem on the priority queue in this program we are using some more functions that are provided by the priority queue class so in this priority queue program we are passing integer so that means we want to store the integer elements into the priority queue so we are adding these elements let's see over here uh, integer 10 then we added 20 then we added 50 i would like to remind you that uh, we can store the objects in the priority queue so what is happening over here is when you will pass the primitive type 10 it will be converted into integer object automatically that we discussed uh, in the yesterday's class that uh, uh, if you pass the number then that number is converted into the integer object and that concept is called uh, auto boxing so auto boxing will happen over here and the object will get stored into the priority queue so in this way we are adding three elements into the priority queue first we added 10 then we added 20 so uh, 20 will get added after 10 then if you add 15 after that because 15 uh, is a number greater than 10 and lesser than 20 so it will get added between 10 and 20 so that means the priority of uh, the 10 is highest then the priority of uh, 15 and after that the least priority element will be 20 so th these will get added in this order so if you if you now want perform some operation on uh, on these as in this case we are doing what we are doing is we are using a peak method so q dot peak when you call the peak method it gives you the head of the queue or we can say the front element of the queue the front element of uh, the queue is 10 so this will give you 10 so peak basically returns you the front element of the priority queue but it doesn't remove that element from the queue so the element remain there will remain there in the queue but this peak method will return it 
so that will get printed but in case of poll method this also gives you the head element or the front element of the queue but this poll method removes the head element of the priority key from it so the purpose of both is to read the element this is a similar purpose the difference between these two is peak will not remove the front element from the queue but poll will remove the front element also so the next again we are using the peak so that means we are reading the second element but we are not uh, removing it from the queue so this this is the result that we are getting so peak will give you 10 if you try to check out the size of the list before that uh, let's check its size whether we can get it so if you try this then it will give you three because at this step there are three elements in the queue so as we discussed peak will only read the element but will not remove the front element so after that size should be again three but after poll because poll removes the element as well so after that we should get the size uh, uh, equal to two so see we're adding we are getting size three then we are uh, uh, retrieving one element using the peak method so this will give you front element and it will not remove it from the Q I with the second we are getting this just reading. and if you use poll then it will remove the element from the priority queue as well. So if you print the size after that you will get two because earlier there were three elements, but after the peak uh, only two elements will remain in the priority queue. So the next problem on uh, the priority queue is uh, this one. So here in this case, what we are going to do is uh, first, almost similar kind of uh, functions uh, we are doing over here. Let me check the another problem. So this is the next problem on uh, priority queue and in this we are using uh, comparator to set the priorities of the elements. So how we can set the priorities of the elements? So this we are going to decide how you can change the priority through the uh, comparator. So one important point is, as we discussed earlier in the previous uh, two problems on priority queue, that if you just create the object of uh, the priority queue, like here we are creating the object without using the comparator, then it will follow the natural ordering. Natural ordering means if uh, a number uh, let's say in this case 10 15 and 20 so 10 will get the higher priority 15 will get the next higher priority 10 will get the highest priority uh, and after that the element with the lesser priority is 15 and the element with the least priority is 20 so lower is the element higher will be its priority right so this is called natural ordering 
but here in this program in the program number uh, this 12 collection 12 we want to arrange the students in the order of their uh, cgpa let's say so we have created one class a student class and we want to store the student class objects in the priority queue as we discussed that you can store in the collection classes any type of object the object can be of fundamental type uh, that we are uh, using till now like uh, we used integer we used uh, collection classes with strings but this is the first example where we are using user defined class in this case student and we are trying to store the elements of the student class in a priority queue so for that uh, i'm going to show you the code this is the student class that i have already coded so in this student class we have uh, one instance variable name and other instance variable cgpa and there is one constructor that will initialize the name and cgpa with some values when the object of this class will be created and there is a method get name and when called it will return the name of the student so next is if you want to change or set the ordering of the elements you have to implement comparator so you have to use the comparator with the collection classes for that we are creating a comparator over here so we have another class student comparator and whenever you want to create a comparator you have to implement the comparator interface this is a generic interface so you have to pass it the type of the object on which you want to perform the comparison so we want to perform the comparison on student class object so we have passed it the student class so this in this you just need to overload or override a compare method that is they are implementing it we are providing that and uh, for that as we discussed in the interface chapter earlier every method that is defined in the interface you have to uh, declare the data interface you have to define that in in the class that implements it and that too with the public access modifier so we are implementing this compare this this is the method that is declared in comparator uh, interface so it uh, takes two types uh, two of parameters both of type uh, that you will pass to it so because we passed to it the student so both the parameters are of student type as well as two then this method compare will return one or we can say positive value negative value or zero we return zero if the two objects are are of the same priority we can say then we return zero that indicates that as one answer then the cgpa of uh, the second object so if the s1 cgpa is lesser than the s2 cgpa then we are returning one this means that we we want to give a student with lower cgpa right, uh, the lower precedence 
that means the higher cgpa student will get stored first then the student with the next cgpa then the student with the next cgpa and so on so we want to store the student list in the order of their cgpa the student with the higher cgpa uh, will get the first place in the priority queue then the student object with the lesser cgpa will get the next place and so on so if you want to reverse the order in this case higher is the number then more is the priority then in that case we will apply this and if s1.cgpa is greater than we want to store it before that so in that case we are returning a negative number so if s1.cgpa is uh, greater than c.cgpa in that case we are returning one so the crux of the problem is we will discuss more problems on this comparator and uh, soon you will get those So now let's come to the main part here in in this main we are uh, creating the object of the priority queue we passed the student as the type of the object that we want to store in the priority queue and uh, in the brackets we mentioned five that is the size so we set the capacity of the priority queue initially to five and after that this is the new parameter we passed the object of the comparator class so our comparator class is student comparator that we implement right over here student comparator we are creating the object of that and passing that to the uh, priority queue class right so that will be passed as an object so that means now the whenever the we will add elements into the priority queue the uh, first based on the output of the comparator uh, it will decide where to add that element so i will show you one by one how this will get stored into the priority queue so first i am going to run it to show you the output then i will explain these step by step so if you look at uh, this this uh, five four student that we have added over here so we are creating in every case we are creating the student the object of the student class over here let's say one object is this student three another object is student two another object is student one so the name of the students are Jeet, Pratham, Arju, and Aman. And their CGP is 3.2, 3.6, 4.0, and 3.6 respectively. So when you will add the student class object, because the priority queue will be empty in the beginning. So when you add the using this pq.add, this student uh, Jeet, uh, whose name is Jeet, will get added as the first element because in that case there will be only one element in the in the priority queue. But when you try to add the second element, pq dot add, now the comparator will check whether uh, what what it will do. First, this the the new element that you are adding, uh, that is student two that will be passed on to the uh, first parameter here as well and the element that is there already that will be passed to the s2 so it, it will check whether the s1.cgpa now the second case s1.cgpa is uh, 3.6 and it's lesser than the second cgpa no so condition is false so but the second condition is true s dot cgpa 
is greater than astro.cgpa so this will return negative so negative means the element will be added this with the higher priority will be added before the element that is there on the queue so that means uh, this second student will get added before the uh, before the first element that is there on the priority queue already so it will get added before jit so when you try to add the third object now the in case of third its priority is uh, cgp is 4 so according to our method this should get the higher priority or the highest priority and it should get added before the elements before all the elements that are there in the priority queue so when you add to the priority queue student 3 again the comparator will call will get called and the it will decide upon based upon that where that will get added into the priority queue as we discussed earlier so like this we can use the comparator and uh, assign the priority to the elements so based on that we are adding the elements uh, to the queue right we are not assigning any number to the elements of the queue but when you add the elements into the uh, into the priority queue they they are stored in certain order and the order is decided from the comparator if uh, no comparator is used then the natural ordering uh, is used as the priorities so that means if uh, you store the alphabet a that will get the highest priority we will get the next uh, lower priority c will get the next lower priority and so on and if there is comparator based on the logic of the comparator the order of the elements are decided when they are added into the priority queue so if you look at this uh, see what uh, first we added the four elements into the uh, priority queue then we are removing these elements one by one so we are using a while loop for retrieving the elements how we are uh, retrieving the elements that i am going to show you So in this case, we are using pq dot is empty because there are four elements in the priority queue. So is empty will return false, and this not will convert it into true. So this will return false, and not false will convert it into true so because this part is true now so the body of the while will get executed and in this case we are using pq.pol so as we discussed earlier it will uh, remove the first element top element from the queue uh, that will be the student type object because this queue uh, is used to store the objects of the student class so this highlighted part pq.pol will give you the uh, the the object that is there in the front of the queue and with that object we are calling the get name method so we will get the name arju because arju is uh, the first element because it this student has the highest cgpa then the control will go back to the conditional part again because the first element has been removed already so is empty is not uh, true again it, it will return false there will be three elements in the queue not will convert that true to false uh, false to true and the body of the loop will execute again this time pq.pol will give you the next element uh, that is there on the queue so that will be aman because the next uh, higher priority element is aman because two elements are with the same priority so if the two elements are with the same priority then uh, the element that is added uh, last will come to the first 
place before that so that's why we are getting uh, aman over here similarly the next result it will show is pratham and next you will get uh, jeet so in this order they will get printed and this program uh, basically uh, explains how we can use the comparator in the priority queue So the next is next uh, next uh, collection class is uh, array dq. This is the collection class, and uh, this class array dq extends extends the abstract collection and implements dq interface and it adds no method of its of its own another important point is this array dq creates the dynamic array and uh, has no capacity restrictions so you can add as many elements to this as you require there is no restriction on this and the array dq class has a generic form that is given in this case so again it receives the type of the object that you want to store into the dq so uh, what is dq first that is the important point in this case so dq is a, a kind of uh, data structure uh, kind of queue we can say and in this queue uh, insertion or deletions can be performed at both the ends in case of normal queues insertions can take place at one end that is called the rear end of the queue and deletions can take place at the other end that is called the front end of the queue so that is the case of normal queue but in case of DQ, DQ basically stands for double-ended queues. And in double-ended queues, insertions and deletions can take place at both the ends. So you can add the elements at the front and remove the elements from the rear. Or you can reverse it. You can remove the elements from the front and add the elements from the rear so this is the case with with the dq and even the dq uh, if you because this supports insertion and deletion at both ends so if in case of dq you perform insertion and deletions at the one end only then that becomes the stack so this dq also helps us to implement stack as well because stack is a kind of data structure where the insertion and the additions take place at one and only so uh, in this case if you add the elements first that will be removed at last so that is called the lifo list last in first out list so this class array dq class helps us to implement both stack and uh, a queue some of the constructors that are provided in the array dq class are array dq without any parameter array dq with the uh, some size and then the array dq with a collection we'll discuss soon how we can use the last uh, constructor first two hope we have used a lot in other uh, collection classes so if you build a dq with the without any parameter then the default capacity of that will be 16 
this is the important thing now let's discuss how we can use this class on eclipse so i'm going to show you another program here this one the simple one in this case uh, we are using the array degree as a stack so we can insert elements from one end and we can remove the elements from the same end so in case of stack we use uh, one word for inserting the element that is called push so whenever you want to insert the element that is basically termed as pushing the element into the stack so in this program this push method is used and uh, push is a is an operation that is associated with stack that means adding the element on the stack on the top of the stack we can say and another word that is associated with the stack is pope that means removing the top element from the stack so pope is for removing the top element and push is for inserting the element at the top of the stack so if you create a stack in the beginning that stack will be initially empty that we have created through this statement that i have highlighted on my laptop and because we haven't mentioned any size uh, while we were creating the object so the default size of the array dq will be 16 as we discussed earlier then we are adding one element at a time into the stack so we are using the push method adq dot push we inserted a first so this a will get added uh, at the top of the stack then we added b so b will get added above a after that we are pushing d so d will get added above b so if i show you uh, diagrammatically so this this will be the case i'm going to show you on the slide so this is the stack uh, i am going to show you with the, a box that is open at one end so if you add a first that will get added as a top element so the top will initially be uh, it can be a zero or minus one in the beginning that indicates that uh, the stack is initially empty when you add a, it will get added at the top so it can be upward growing stack or downward growing stack there are many ways to represent this so i am going to represent it with the upward growing uh, uh, stack so when you add b that b will get added at the top of uh, a and the value of top will change first from minus one to zero and then zero to one then we, if you add c that will get added at the top of b if you add d after that you will get this d will get added at the top of c and then if you add e that will get added at the top of d now you can remove the elements one at a time from the top so first e will be removed then d will be removed from the stack then c will be removed and so on so this is the case so if you look at that program again you have added the elements five elements on the stack in this order if you try to remove that you will get those elements in the reverse order so first you will get f then e and d then b and then a now how you can retrieve that for that we are using a while loop first we are using a peak so this peak method will return the top element of the stack but that element will not be removed from the stack this is the important point in case of peak so it will just return the top element but that element will not be removed from the stack so it will return f in the beginning if there is no element on the stack then in that case the peak method returns null so if it returns null that indicates that there is no element on the stack or we can say stack is empty 
so because there are five elements on the stack that we already added so this will not return null and this condition will evaluate to true not equal to null will evaluate to true it will allow you to true we are popping the elements so we are removing the elements from the top of the stack so this will remove the f from the top of the stack and that will get printed and then the control will go to the condition part of the while loop again it will check the next element because f is already removed the next element is e it will pick that now it's not null and uh, so the loop will continue and this a adq.pop will pop that element e from the the top of the stack and that will get printed so in this way it it will this loop will run five times when it will remove all the elements and in the last iteration this adq.pick will return null because in that case there will be no element on the stack and uh, null not equal to null will evaluate to false and control will come out of the loop so let's check the output of uh, this program so we are getting f a d b a so this is the case so i so here uh, I'm going to give you a chance to ask questions if there is any doubt. So I have already this class uh, in this uh, program on this slide we are going to discuss uh, how we can use collection via an iterator. So generally in the previous programs we used uh, either the while loop or the for loop for uh, printing all the elements of the collection classes right i showed you how to print the elements using the for each version of the for loop to print the array uh, list class elements so uh, there is another way uh, we can uh, print the elements and uh, that is through the use of uh, iterator so there are two ways for doing that one uh, is through the iterator and uh, other is through the list uh, iterators so basically this iterator helps us to uh, loop loop through the elements of uh, the collection and uh, how we can cycle through the collection uh, for that you have to uh, get the object of the iterator that i will show you soon how you can uh, get the object of the iterator and uh, uh, loop through the uh, collection classes the difference between these two uh, iterator one is uh, list iterator and the other is uh, uh, just iterator in case of list iterator we can either uh, uh, move through the list in the forward direction or in the backward direction so bidirectional traversing of the list is allowed by uh, list iterator or supported by the list iterator whereas in case of uh, iterator you can iterate through the uh, collection collection classes in the uh, in the forward direction only or in one direction only so this is the general uh, declaration of uh, the genetic declaration of the interfaces iterator and the list iterator how you can use that that we are going to discuss soon through the eclipse program java program that is written on eclipse so these are the methods that are uh, provided by the iterator so we are going to use these uh, methods soon so one is as next that returns include there are uh, if there are more elements on the iterator and uh, false otherwise and this next returns the next element uh, that is there on the list it can be a hash list or some other list 
or has set list or a tree set it can be a tree set as well so and remove can remove the elements from the list so let's discuss this by uh, with the help of a program so here is the program for that uh, that is based on the iterator so in this we are uh, implementing the array list that we implemented where in the very beginning when we started the collection classes we are adding some elements to on the array list right then we are uh, basically using the iterator so how we can use the iterator first we are uh, getting the iterator object through this al is the name of uh, the reference that is of uh, array list class and uh, iterator is the name of the method so what it does it returns an iterator over the uh, elements in the list so you basically get the uh, reference to the iterator so this is the iterator uh, reference variable right and iterator is of type uh, string because we added the string elements in it then how we can move through the elements of this array list so first as we discussed we are checking in the while loop uh, with has uh, next whether there, there there is any element in the uh, in the list that is being referred by the iterator or not so this has a next will return true because there are elements in the list right iterator is first referring to the very first element that you added that is c then with the when when this will return true it will come to the body of uh, this while loop and iterator dot next will give you the next element so the next element is c right the first element in the list and after after you get the next element the reference in the iterator will uh, get updated and now it will start referring to the second element of uh, the array list that is a so then after when it will go here in the condition part of the while loop it will check iterator does has next because it has next element a so this will return true and this body of the loop will get executed and you will get iterator dot next so this will give you a because the iterator is now was now referring to a so that will get printed a will get printed here and as it will read the next element the uh, reference will shift to the next element a so now the the iterator is referring to the third element of the list and uh, this time the iterator dot has next will return true again and because it is referring to e iterator dot next will return e now and uh, after reading it the iterator will shift to the next element so this will keep on going until the next last element of the uh, list has been retrieved so when uh, it has gone past the last element in that case iterator does has next will return false and the control will come out of the loop so when the control will come out of the uh, of this while loop this iterator will be referring to the the element just past the last element so or, or in other words we can say it will be at the end of the the list now the list can be traversed back because the reference to the iterator is already at the end so this time we are uh, using uh, another uh, iterator type that is list iterator so here we are uh, uh, going to get the list iterator right so this will return the beginning again and similar to what we discussed earlier it will uh, uh, cycle through all the elements using this while loop but this time we are using the list iterator so after going through all the elements if you try to go through the elements in the reverse order because after the uh, list iterator has gone through the elements from beginning to end the iterator list iterator will be referring to the element uh, after the end or we will be at the end of the and uh, at the end of the list so you can now uh, move back or you can do the backtracking 
and how you can do that that i have explained over here in this part so in this part we are using over here uh, what is the difference that i'm just going to discuss as previous so if the you are moving the it term back then you will check has previous if you are moving forward then you will check has next so if uh, you are moving back and uh, then the iterator will start from the last position and it will move back, back one step at a time as you will keep on reading the last element so this will read the element by element iterator dot uh, previous that will get stored in the uh, element variable of string type and then it will get printed and uh, as soon as this has previous is uh, returning true that means there is some element in the list and this will traverse the list in the backward order this is i'm going to show the output of this uh, to you so the contents is uh, c a e d b f then we modified it to using some loop over here that you can check later on because this part we have already discussed so i haven't uh, explained it to you here i'm changing it yes this part with set we are changing the elements of the list and uh, we changed it from c to c plus we added plus at the end of every element so the modified contents we are getting then we are doing the uh, reverse tracking or backward tracking or uh, backward traversing so this will print the reverse of that so because we have discussed it a lot so uh, that means um, you will get it i think uh, if there is some issue we can discuss it uh, in the another class but i hope that uh, you all get this because we have discussed a lot of programs on uh, this uh, collection classes right so if there is any doubt you can uh, ask your doubts right now otherwise uh, uh, we are going to end the today's uh, 